everybody, it's Gigi with Stamp Fanatics. I'm just going to take a minute. I'm on a few minutes early. i um, just getting a few more things ready and then we'll begin at 10. While we're waiting, I'm just going to start telling you about some of the great specials that Stampin' Up! has right now. And one of them is joining my team. If you join my team in July, you can order 10 free stamp sets. And that's besides choosing anything you want from the annual or the clearance catalog and you can get $125 worth of product for only $99. That's also free shipping so you're saving all that money and the ink pads that they have, let me show you here, there's five different families. There is the in colors which were last year's in colors and then the brand new five new in colors from this year so that's 10. You can get the Brights collection, you can get the Neutrals, the Regals, or the Subtles. And that all comes to you free for joining up on my team. And that, you just go to stampfanatics.com. It's such a savings, over $190 to $200 worth of free product, only for $99. So it's an amazing time. This is like the best deal I've seen for joining. So if you've been thinking about it, and what I mean by joining my team is, you can just join as a hobbyist, which is what I did in the beginning. I just wanted the discount. You get 20% off your future orders. Um, you can also build it as a business later if you decide you want to earn some extra income, and I will help you and support you in that. If you're just a hobbyist, most of my team is a hobbyist. And so we all get together um, when we can, maybe once a quarter, and stamp and have fun and share ideas. Weekly, though, uh, I have a private Facebook site, and we all join each other on there. I help them stay up on all the specials and Stampin' Up! news that comes out and um, anything they should know. We share card ideas, three-dimensional ideas, little gift bags and totes and things. So join us. We'd love to have you. You don't have to live in North Carolina. You can um, join up because we do everything on Facebook Live and virtual. So if you've been thinking about it, contact me. You can um, Contact me at stampfanatics at gmail.com or just comment on uh, the Facebook below and I'll get a hold of you and let's talk further about it. There's no obligation. This will take you through December 31st with your discount and that's with no additional purchases. If you decide you want to continue to get your discount, then you have minimums of $300 per quarter. So that's about an average of $100 a month. So if you find yourself spending anyway, you could be saving 20% of that and really not be spending the $100. You'd only be spending about $80. So um, definitely keep that in mind. Then they also, for demonstrators, and this could be part of your kit, I believe, um, is Color Your Season. This is a new exclusive stamp set. It's only going to be offered to customers for the month of August, but you can get on it now. And here's the stamp set. It has all these beautiful stamps and sayings and Christmas and also your friend and um, wishing you the best. So it has other things, congratulations, that could be for a wedding. And then it has all these wonderful stitched framelits, and these are awesome too. Um, you can also, in addition, add watercolor pencils. This is our second assortment that we've come out with, with a lot of the new in, I mean, new colors that have come out for us for this year. And they're twelve fifty, and you get ten pencils. But this is only exclusive to demonstrators. So, like I said, now is a great time to join if you've been thinking about it. And then I have one more deal for you, and that is our designer series paper. We have buy three and get one free. And this is only, again, through the month of July. They have just exploded with specials in July for some reason, but take advantage of it. Um, now's your time to stock up on your paper, especially if they have the Christmas paper in here. Um, let's see, yeah, under the mistletoe, that's on page 189 in your catalog. And these are the select few that you can purchase. I'm gonna be using two of them today. I'm gonna to be using this animal outing, and I'm also using, um, let's see, what's this called? This is Tropical Escape. So you'll see two of them. This is just our new In Colors um, designer series paper stack that's six by six that I also wanted to show you. But these are on the special here. You can buy Nature's Poem, Twinkle Twinkle, Under the Mistletoe. There's just a ton of them here. And then you pick these out and you can get your fourth one free. So again, that's just through the month of July. Okay, the stamp set I'm going to be using today is the Stitched All Around, and this is like a wonderful set. It's got some nice thank yous, You Are My Sunshine, big font for a special, uh, your special day, Oh Darling, You're Fabulous, and then Lovely Friend, and 
I even thought about you are, and then you could say a lovely friend or something. You can mix these up or best friend. You know, you just would mask that part and then say best and then friend. So there's different things. And it comes with these great framelits. Now, I have some of my framelits already out today. And this is how I use them when I'm when I'm stamping. Is I just have a clear acrylic frame. And I put some magnetic stripping on it. And then I just put my framelits there. So we're using these three framelits from that set today. And then we're also using our stitched shapes, which is the largest square. So I just wanted to show you what we'll be using on the um, bags and boxes later. All right. So let me get some of this out of the way. And let's do this and this until we get to it. And we're going to start with this little box. Let's start small and we'll go big. So for this one, all right, I have my scoreboard. And what I'm doing is I'm just taking a piece of 6x6 six six designer series paper. Now, you can use any of that other paper I just showed you that's the big 12x12. 12 12. You would just cut it down, and you could get four of these to um, one sheet. But this is our 6x6. Six six. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to score it at 1 and 3 eighths. So I'm going to go 1 and then count down 3 and score. And then 2 and 3 fourths. 4 and 1 eighth and five and a half. And then I'm just going to turn it once and I'm going to score the other side at one and three eighths. And also four and an eighth and five and a half. Oops, jumping the little track there. Okay. Now with this, I'm just going to take my bone folder and I'm just going to lightly crease these. You want to be careful when you're using designer series paper because it is, you know, a little lighter than our cardstock and we don't want to break through the paper. So I'm just doing it lightly because any boxes, I really do like to use my bone folder and get a really crisp edge. Okay. And this is what a bone folder is in case. You don't know. These are available in our catalog. All right. So let's see. Now, you're going to notice that there are big squares at the bottom of this side. There's a narrow little side here. This is going to be the bottom of our box. And then this little narrow one at the top is going to be the top of our box. Let me make sure I'm telling you right. Yes. Okay. So I'm going to just take my paper snips and I'm going to cut up on those score lines. I know they might be hard to see. Maybe it'll be easier to watch it on this side. There we go. All right, and then I'm going to just do that little edge there, and I'm actually going to take that off. All right, and let's see. Those are going to stay straight. Now over here, I'm actually going to remove this whole side. So the other narrow side, I'm just going to cut off. And then... I am going to cut in this little part off and then I'm going to cut it all the way up because I need the tab. I'll just take that little part off. This one with the little, we're going to keep. So you're just going to cut up on that score line and leave that. And then this side, I'm going to cut it off again. And I'm going to go to here. And then I'm actually cutting this whole thing off. Okay, now on these two tabs, I am going to miter them. And miter them is just cutting a snip off of each side just because it makes the box close up easier. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, and let's see. On this side, I'm going to leave them the way they are. Um, Hmm, let's see, is there something else I wanted to do? I think that's good. Okay, so let's clean that up. All right, so this becomes the side of our box, and I'm going to glue it over like that. 
and then this will be the bottom and this will be the top. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna put snail on this one because it's designer paper. Now you can use tear and tape if you're really gonna put something heavier in there. It's a small box, I don't think it's gonna to need too much. Okay, and then I want my seam to the back and this is gonna be how the box closes to the front. So when I'm doing the bottom, I'm gonna tuck in my sides, pull up the back, and then I wanna go around this way because this is the front of my box. So I'll just go ahead and put a little more snail there. And close that up. And then what I'm gonna do at the top here is just snip it a little bit at an angle. It just helps it go in the box that much better. And then close up my box. And there you go, that's the box. All right, so the next part I have is I have this gorgeous ribbon, and this is our Bermuda Bay. It's that wonderful, I think it's about um, maybe a quarter of an inch, and I'm just gonna wrap it around, and I'm just gonna tie it off. I'm not gonna do a bow or anything this time. I'm just tying, so let me show you real quick. And if you notice, I don't really cut my ribbon off until I know I've got enough and I have it the way I want it because I don't like to waste my ribbon. So, well, let's see. And there we go. All right. So then I just cut off a little bit. Let me get my ribbon scissors. And I'm just kind of cutting it at an angle. Let's do it that way. Okay, maybe we'll make that even a little bit shorter. There. Okay. Now the next part, I need my ink. And what we're going to be using is the Sunshine Stamp. You are my sunshine. My only sunshine. And I'm not going to sing for you, but um, here's our Bermuda Bay ink. And we're also going to use the new Pineapple Punch because that was the color of our designer paper was the Pineapple Punch. So I need a piece of white. I'm just using regular Whisper White. And I think I'm going to stamp the light one first. And this one, I really just want the saying, so I'm just going to stamp it and not worry about it. And then, okay, these are our new pads, so let me flip it. Okay, and then our Bermuda Bay, I still have the old pad on that one, so let me use my chamois. And this is the new chamois that we have, and I'm just gonna wash off the ink, get that good. And I keep mine in a case, just so it stays moist while I'm using it. And this is just a regular stamp case that you can order in our catalog. Then I'm going to go ahead and stamp you are my sunshine. That looks good. And again, let me just wipe that off. Okay. So I'm going to bring in the big shot now, and I'm going to use this circle framelit for this box. And that's the one that looks like that. I'm only going to put it around the blue one because the yellow one I'm really just going to cut out with my um, paper snips. And paper snips are just a small, tiny uh, scissor for those of you that don't know. It didn't dawn on me, but there has been some questions about what it, what's a paper snip. So that's all it is. Okay, then let's put that over here. We'll come back to that. And then I have one of my dye brushes and my little pad, and I'm just going to go around, it just releases all those tiny little cuts that are in around the circle there. All right, and then what I do just to get the last few, I kind of lift it up a little bit and then it's all clean and ready to go again. Okay. So now on this one, I'm gonna take my paper snips and I'm just gonna cut out the word sunshine. And this is what makes this stamp fun is that you can pop it up and make it look dimensional. Okay, and let's see, we're gonna cut it about there, I think. And if we need to shorten it, we can shorten it. Let me just straighten out my cut a little bit. There we go. Okay, now do you see how this is gonna fit right over there and that'll just bring that color up? So what I'm gonna need to use is my mini dimensionals. Let me get my paper piercer. Got it in the back here. 
And I'm just going to take two of these, I think, will do. Wait a minute, got a little stuck there. And just put it down. And then we'll just get one more. Okay. And we'll just put it over the word sunshine so that we bring the yellow back up from our, our box. And now we're ready. Let me make sure that is the front of the box. Okay, we're just going to put it on there. And I'm going to use one regular size dimensional for that. And that's all you need. Okay, so that's box number one. Isn't that adorable? And I know some people were asking what could fit in it. I actually brought out one of my lipsticks and it would fit in there perfect. Or you could put a lot of cute little treats in there. Um, you name it. It's just a cute, adorable box and so fast and easy. And look how many you can get out of a six by six piece of paper. So that's one of our boxes. All right, let's go to box number two, which is actually a bag. And I made this giant bag. Can you tell by my hand? It's like two hands high <laughs> is what I can show you. Um, and this I did with the animal outing. This is one of the papers that are on sale right now. And um, it just can hold a ton of whatever goodie you want to put in there. And so I thought this is perfect. Now today I'm going to use a different piece from our animal outing. And this one, I mean, this one is definitely more, I think, for children. It says, enjoy your special day. And I think it's kind of more, you know, for kids because of all the animals and everything. Although there are people that love a lot of animals and they might love it. So this time I thought I'd go more grown up and I would just do the ones with the leaves and the birds. We're still going to be using that pretty color there, um, our lovely lipstick, um, and to make these little glimmer dots later that will bring that color back up. So that's the only change. All right, I'm bringing in my scoring tool. Now this time again, we're going to be using the whole 12 by 12 sheet. Now when you have a pattern like this, the one thing you want to remember is to turn it because our first score mark is going to be the bottom of the bag. All right, so let me get my notes here. And these are a PDF that if you purchase any of these sets, I will send you these free. And you can remember how to work them and use them. Um, I'll send you a PDF in an email, and you can go to go and use them there. All right, so we're going to score at two and a quarter. And remember not to score too hard on your designer paper because, like I said, it is a little thinner. Then we're going to turn it so that our score line is at the bottom, and we're going to go ahead and score at two and a quarter again. Five and a quarter. Seven and a half. And ten and a half. All right. And this is our scoring tool, if I hadn't already said that. I use it a lot almost in every day, every project. Um, again, I'm just going to go ahead and fold on some of our score lines gently. On this one, there are one, two, three, four squares, and then there's more of a rectangle. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this rectangle off. So let me go ahead and, okay, I really can't see with the lights, but we'll hope for the best. And we're going to go ahead and cut that. And then we're going to cut the rest of the score lines, the four score lines, up to the first score line. And we got one there. And we've got one more there. Okay. Now again, we're going to fold this down and then this will come over for our bag. So this time um, we can still use snail. Let's just do that for the sake of time. You can use a stronger adhesive, though, if you like your glue, or you can use your um, tear and tape. But 
if I were to put this, I would probably put some crazy socks or something lighter in there. And again, I'm going to fold in my bottoms and I want my seam to the back. So I'm going to fold this down. So this will be the one that will get my extra tape. And that way it folds to the back of your bag. All right. So let's fold that out. even want to take your bone folder you can go down to the bottom of your bag hey Don how you doing thanks for joining me okay I know the papers are fantastic and they're a really great deal right now being on sale okay so once you put your items in and you have everything down the way you want it you're just going to take your fingers and just pinch in like that okay and then it'll just kind of go along the side a little bit but you're really only worrying about the top part all right, and then I'm taking my handheld hold punch, and this one is um, an eighth. So it's a little bit bigger because the ribbon I'm using is pretty big. And I'm just going to go ahead and punch in for the ribbon. Okay. And now I'm using this gorgeous granny green. It's granny apple green. It is the most beautiful pliable ribbon I've seen. I do cut it in a little bit of a point, so this way it's easier to go through. The bag because it is so big and I'll just go ahead and put that through this side and pull it through and then I'm going to bring it back in to the front Let's see. okay it's spraying a little bit so let me just cut another point right, let's see if we have enough of a point there Trying to do both at one time. Now you could do one at a time, but I just go for fast. <laughs> so, all right, let's do about there. And then all I did was tie it up. You can tie it in a knot first if you want. Um, I thought it kind of laid a little flatter if I didn't tie it in the knot, and I just went right to the bow. So there we go. And then let me just tighten it real good. I'm going to go ahead and just cut it at an angle, and now I'll cut it off my roll. And let's fiddle with it a little bit more. Now, yeah, maybe we do need to cut it. I think we are going to just go ahead and tie it in a knot. I don't like the way that was coming undone. I think this will hold it a little bit better. Okay, you're seeing stuff in real time, people. This is how I figure things out, too. <laughs> okay, so... Let's just tie that. Yeah, that's tying much tighter now. So there we go. All right. Now the next part we're going to do is we're going to use, let's see, our granny apple green to match our ribbon ink. And this is our new ink pads that are like a compact. And you just slide them in. And I'm using the big stamp and whisper white paper. Let's get that little hole punch out of there. And... Okay, just ink it up. That looks good. I just clean it off. I don't know, Dawn, have you seen the chamois? This is awesome. This is how you can clean with just water all your stamps. It cleans it up really well. It works with the Stamparatus really well, too. That's why I love it. And then later when you're done, at the end of the day, you just rinse this out with water and let it dry. Absolutely love it, especially on the Stamparatus because the ink um, kind of gets like where you, you can just wipe it off if you smear it over on it. All right, and then the framelit I'm going to be using on this bag is the big square, and this is our stitch square framelit. And so we're going to run both of these at the same time. Let's just take that down a little bit. Let's get the big shot back in there. Okay. And I'm using my magnetic platform because it holds the dies really well. Let's get that little piece of paper off. Okay. So, the first thing I'm doing is my little square, which I can put on and push up. And then this one, I'm using, let's see, where's the bag? This gorgeous framelit. This one is so unique because it stitches and cuts. So it's sort of an embossing and a cutting at the same time, and you'll see what I mean. Let me try to get this on straight. It looks pretty good. I absolutely love the dies that come in this set. 
And when it has the stitching, I just kind of run it back too one more time just so it really gets the stitching well. Okay, and then this, I'm gonna bring in my little pad again. Let me get my crumbs off the last time. And I'm just gonna take my brush and go over it again. And see how it, it cuts out and then look at the stitching. Isn't that wonderful? All this beautiful stitching around here. Okay, so that is that frame. Let me make sure I've got it nice and clean. Good, all right. Okay, so this one we've got, this is our stitched square. So we have the stitching. I'm actually turning it on the diamond shape for this. Let me get this out of here. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take my first thing that I stamped and I'm going to take a few dimensionals and I'm just going to, I'm actually going to take four I think and put them up and down and put them on this diamond shape and then that will go on the bag. And I'll show you what I'm going to do before I put it on the bag. All right. Just going to kind of line it up. I think that looks about even. Press it down. And then we're going to go to our new glitter enamel shapes. Love these. Look at the colors they came in. Um, I think this is Highland Heather, Lovely Lipstick, the Granny Apple, and then the, I believe it's Bermuda Bay. Um, I'm going to take the small size and I'm just going to put one up here on the E where it swoops out. And then I'm going to take another small one and put it down here right at the bottom of day. And that just gives it enough of a little bit of bling that I love. All right. So now we're ready to put it on our bag. And at this time I'm only going to use two, maybe one at the top and bottom of our dimensionals. And we'll stick that on our bag right about here. Okay. And that'll do it. And that's our cute little bag. Isn't that adorable? Do you love it? <laughs> I love it. Okay. So that's our second bag. And now we're coming to our third box. And that's this one. And this is a great box. It, it holds pretty much, um, it could hold a lot of Ghirardelli's. It could hold jewelry, a little bracelet, um, of course, chocolate treats and everything. It's just a fun box. So this is our next project. And this one, we're going to be using a piece of Blushing Bride, and this is measured nine and a half by seven and a half. So I cut it down a little bit. I'm going to use my scoring tool again. Okay, and on the, the longer side, which was the, what did I say? It was nine and a half. We're going to score it at three and a half, four and a half eight inches, Oops, jump in the track there, Hang on, eight inches, and nine. And if you jump the track a little bit like I did with that line, I just go in the back and go over it again with my stylus, and it just kind of takes that line back out. Okay, then you wanna turn it on the short side, and we're gonna score at one inch, two inches, five and a half, and six and a half. All right. Man, let me get my template on this one because this one had a lot of cuts. Okay, first we're gonna take our scoring tool, I mean our uh, bone folder, and we're gonna crease all of our box pieces, all of our scored lines. This one and there. Okay. Now the only other thing you needed was your designer series pack, and again, this is the um, tropical. What was it called? Wait a minute. Let's see if I can find it. 
This is the Tropical Escape paper. It's just so gorgeous, tropical. Now this one I used one that had a lot of little leaves and things. This one is more bold, but I thought let's show off a couple of them. So these measure three and a quarter by three and a quarter. So you're gonna need two of them. All right, let's see. We are going to cut, let's see, make sure I've got this going right. Yep. No, wait a minute. I'm missing a score line, I think. Let's see. Yeah, I'm missing this one. So hold on. Let's see what I missed. So it just didn't look right. So this one would be at five and a half if I have this down this way. We'll do five and a half. Okay. I will add that to the directions. There we go. I think that looks better. Okay, so the first thing, let's see, let's start from the bottom, which are the tall ones, and we're gonna cut up on our first score line. We're gonna cut up two squares, and then we're gonna cut this first square off. To leave this tab and I'm gonna go ahead and miter that tab a little bit all right. and then I'm gonna take this all the way up well let's do this first I'm gonna come in on this one let's see, right about there and cut that square off and this one we're going to leave, and then this whole part I'm going to cut off. Okay. Now, let's see, is this right? <laughs> Let me just check. Okay, nope. We're going to cut this whole thing off. There we go. That's why I make a little template when I do this, and then also that's coming off, and that's coming off. All right. And I'll have these new measurements up on my blog for you. All right. And then when we come on this side, we're going to cut off this little square again all the way out. So that's two of them. Let's get that a little straighter. All right. And then I'm cutting off the first square. And I'm going to cut up to the first square tab here. So we make a little tab. And then I'm cutting this up, okay? And I'm cutting all of this off. Okay, that makes it up to there. And then this is coming off. And we're gonna cut this up to make this a tab. Okay, and then we have, let's see, this left. All right, now what I did was I just kind of mitered these two sides, these two ends on the large size. Get all that off, let's get that a little bit straighter. Okay, and the same thing over here, we'll go ahead and miter those little ends. Again, this helps you make the box close easier. I'm gonna miter this tab, just a sliver. And we might as well go ahead and miter these little tabs too. Now on our top part of our box, and let me show you in one second where the top is. This will be our top, is this little lip. Um, you can quarter round it if you want to cut into your box, or you know, you can see how it goes. I might put mine at an angle instead of doing the corner rounder. Okay, so now, no wait, I'm sorry. This is the part that we are going to tape. And I am gonna use tear and tape because this is a box that's a little sturdier with the cardstock. So let's put some tear and tape down. Get that down real good. Okay, that off isn't gonna help me, there we go. All right, and then we're just gonna bring the box around and close it up. Now at this point, 
you can go ahead and put your paper on. And this I'm just using snail. And I'm going to go ahead and put it over that box there and do the same thing on the back. Okay. And at this point, if you don't want to use this box right away, you could store it flat. Otherwise, you can go ahead and close it. So all I'm going to do is go ahead and close this up. And this is why we kind of cut these at an angle. I forgot which way this box was going. When you make several boxes at a time, it's oh, <laughs> a little hard to remember how each one closes. But that's your box. And there you go. And like I said, it just holds so much. It can, it can be another cute little gift box. It can also hold, because it's three and a quarter by three and a quarter, it can hold three by three cards. So you could put a set of cards in there for a little gift, and that would make a nice gift too. Okay, I'm going to be using my Granny Apple Green Ribbon again. Look at that. And I'm just tying it around the back of the box. And I'm going to tie a bow. And this way you can still use your box at the top and the bottom, and you can still open it. And let's do a little height there. And this is how I do bows. I usually come around from the back. They lay better. And I'll just straighten this up a little bit. And there we go. And I'm going to change the angle to go the other way. I love this ribbon. It is so pretty, and it just goes with a lot of the papers that we have. So that is our box. And now... I have a piece of Whisper White and another piece of Granny Apple Green. And I'm going to be using this framelit, which is another stitched and cutting framelit for that little part that goes behind. And then I'm going to be using my Blushing Bride pink. And this one is a thank you. And you can make cute little thank you cards in there. That would be cute. Okay. And then I'm also going to use... Um, Wash this off on my chamois real quick. My granny apple green, because I'm going to bring that green color back up from the back of the um, little framelit that we're going to put on there. So we're just going to stick that off to the side here because I, I just want to thank you again. I don't really care about the circle. All right, let's close up my inks. Remember to close up your inks in between because they are um, going to dry up if you don't. <laughs> All right, let's get our template out, and we're ready to get going. Okay, so I'm putting down on my magnetic plate a piece of Granny Apple Green and that framelit, and then I'm going to get that circle framelit back out again, and I'm going to put that over the saying. Ooh, that's going to be tight. I don't think I did that. You have like an outside edge on this, and I don't think I left enough room, so let me get another piece. I'll stamp it more in the middle. So that it really gets the whole circle. Otherwise, I might chop off part of the circle. Okay, so let's cut this down a little bit. And now it'll fit all the way around. We just want to center it. I'm taking it through again because I love the little stitching. I'm going to make sure it gets the stitching real good. And got my brush. I'm just going to take it out of the frame like that. It gets all those little pieces out. One more little piece. And then the same thing on this one. This little die brush is like the best invention. I love it. Especially for these little intricate pieces. All right, let's just clean that out a little better. See how it, it pops them right out, all the little pieces, otherwise they'd still be stuck in my die. <clears throat> Let me just put them back so I don't lose them. Okay, we're ready to go. All right, so this one, I did push up the bow a little bit. All right, and 
cut out the pink part of the thank you. And let's go about there. And we're going to do the same thing like we did with sunshine. We're just going to put it and pop it right over the middle. So I need my mini dimensionals. Okay. And one more here, and we're almost done. Okay. Any questions so far? How's everybody liking the bags and boxes? Okay, I can work on these. Let's put them over there. Okay. And now I'm just using a regular size dimensional again, just putting one on the back. And that'll take it and put it right on top of the middle. Like that. And then I'm going to put two more <clears throat> on either end of the longer one. Just make sure you're not doing it over the openings because you don't want it to show. Let's get all this out of here. And we're going to put that, oh, stick it to me, right in the middle. I think it's about there. There we go. So those are our boxes for today. So we've got that one. We've got. I think I'll only put one of those in because that's kind of big. And then we've got our little box. So we've got our boxes and our bags. How'd you like that? Let me see. I'm going to do a refresh here. Okay, that's all I have for you today. We're a little bit over time, but I had a lot I wanted to get out to you. Again, I'm just going to tell you those specials. They're awesome. Um, take advantage of them. And if you want to, like I said, there's no obligation to be stay, um, you know, in as a demonstrator. If you don't want to make your minimums, you just don't. But you're good through the end of December, and you'll get 20% off all your orders. So it's definitely a great deal. You get all of your 10 inks free. I would join again if I could just for the inks. <laughs> so it's a great way to get the new colors, get the new um, type style that we have which is like a compact like I said so much easier it doesn't flip off like the old ones and I wanted to show you one more class that I'm having and this is the darling bundle kit uh, darling kit and it is adorable it comes with this great tin it has this wonderful punch and this is exclusive to this this kit you won't get it anywhere else you get two ink spots, which are Night of Navy and Grapefruit Grove. You get a clear block, and you get one, two, three, six stamps. And so for purchasing this, if you use this hostess code, this is my July hostess code, this sells for $45. I have a class local that is paying um, a little bit more because they're going to be using my supplies. But if you're doing it at home... I will give you directions to make all of these cute little note cards with little matching envelopes that match them. We're going to do three cards, and we're also going to do this little pillow box, which is one of our new ones. We're going to do one of our little gable boxes, and we're also going to do one of our new treat time little sour cream boxes and I'm going to show you how to use that framelit. Now, I left my bottom open because I haven't put my goodies in there yet but you would just tape that shut when you're ready. Okay and that's all I've got for you today so if there's no questions I'm going to sign off and say have a great weekend and if you have any comments or questions just put them below and I'll read them and answer you later. Thanks and have a great day.